let's move on uh, after having talked about centering and scaling uh, let's talk a little bit about how we can do uh, normalizations various kinds of normalization um, so in its most basic form uh, we can simply divide by some kind of scalar for every sample uh, to remove the magnitude of each vector, each row vector in our data. We also have the standard normal variate, which is sort of like uh, auto-scaling in the opposite direction. So we're subtracting the row mean from every sample and we're dividing by the standard deviation uh, in each sample. So it's basically transposing and doing auto-scaling and then transposing the data back again. Now we can also do multiplicative scatter correction, uh, which you may have heard about. Mathematically, it's similar to the SNV, the standard normal variant, uh, but the parameters are determined in a slightly uh, different way. But uh, we'll get back to that. For all of these, it holds that if you have, let's say, a zero sample, you may blow up the noise in such samples when you normalize one way or the other. Uh, so that's something uh, to consider. Well, most basically uh, normalization can be done with any kind of norm. Um, normal ones that we use would be the one norm, the two norm and the infinity norm. If you do the one norm, that basically means that you're normalizing to the area so that means you're gonna set uh, the area of each vector uh, to the same area, namely one. Two norm would be uh, the length that you uh, normalize. An infinity norm uh, basically means the maximum. And that means that every sample will have a max value of one. Let's try and uh, take a look at some of these uh, in MATLAB. So let me open MATLAB. And let's take a look at, we'll say, a spectral data set. And then we can see an effect, what the effect is of uh, changing uh, these norms. Let's see, load NIR. This is a data set consisting of a hundred samples and they've been measured with near-infrared spectroscopy and what we can see here is that there's a lot of scattering going on uh, we see that we have offsets that varies and we also have slope differences and basically all of that is not really interesting information let me show you so all the variation going like this and the offset going up and down is not really a uh, chemical information that's related uh, to physical properties uh, due to the particle nature of this uh, particular set of samples. Okay, so let's uh, open, let's say PCA, uh, and let's try and apply different kinds of normalization and see what they will do um, to the spectra. And we're using PLS toolbox here, but uh, you will find this kind of pre-processing in many software packages. Here we are. I'm going to load my spectral data. And we're going to go to the advanced pre-processing. Now, let me see. So, if we move down here, here we have normalization. I'm gonna show my data. Here we are. Okay, so let's apply uh, a one norm. That means we're gonna set the area of every sample to the same value, uh, so one. What you can see here is that it's kind of interesting. For this particular set of samples, we have 100 samples, but in reality, 
there are only five unique samples. So chemically, there are five different samples, but they've been measured uh, with varying degrees of particles, and that's why they look very different due to the scatter uh, that we see in the data. So in reality, a perfect uh, pre-processing would remove all of that uh, scattering and give us five different spectra. And we can see that actually the one norm does a pretty good job at removing a lot of the scattering information simply by normalizing uh, to an area of one. Now we can also try and change this, for example, to a two norm, like this. And we'll see that that's more or less giving us a similar uh, quality. It's not exactly the same, uh, but it's similar. If we apply a one norm, then we require that each and every spectrum will have the same maximum value. I don't think that will be particularly good on this type of data, but it is, no, not really. But now we see that everyone has the same maximum value, but that means we get a high spread on the lower values for each uh, sample. So that's not really uh, maybe the most convenient pre-processing for this particular type of data. Now for other types of data, this may be exactly uh, what you would like to do. That really depends on the type of data and the kind of um, information you have about your data. I'm going to switch to this. That's nice. Now, in some cases, let's say, where we're measuring, let's say we're measuring spectral data. Let's say that this is spectral data. Maybe we get signal or intensity differences due to different sample volumes uh, or things like that. But we may know that a certain group of variables actually uh, should be constant. We don't know about certain other parts, but these particular ones we expect to be constant. Then instead of normalizing to the whole thing, we might also just normalize to specific variables. And we can do that uh, by selecting variables here. I'm not going to go into this now, uh, but I just want to mention that for specific applications, you may be interested in using specific parts of your data. That would not be relevant on this particular data set, but it could definitely be relevant if you were dealing with omics data in some sort, uh, metabolomics or proteomics data. Uh, you would sometimes be interested in doing your uh, normalization only on specific regions. Okay, so this is normalization. Let's move on and talk about multiplicative scatter correction. So multiplicative scatter correction, or also nowadays called multiplicative signal correction, tries to remove scattering uh, and it's based on the idea or the theory that scattering can be approximated uh, as samples, sorry, as signals that vary in offset and in slope. And basically what we try to do in uh, MSC is that we try to correct the slope of each sample so that it's the same as, let's say, we calculate the average signal so then we simply try to make the slope of this one the same as the uh, average spectrum and we try to make the offset the same. And mathematically that's uh, sort of simple. We're basically regressing the spectrum onto the average spectrum and then getting the offset and slope from that uh, to correct. And in many cases uh, with moderate scatter that can give you a very nice reduction in scattering signal. Uh, in this case, for example, you see that all the sort of fan-like variation is almost eliminated. So we are more or less left with the chemical information, which is what we are interested in. We can try and uh, do that on the same data as we looked at before. So let's see. Here we have the data. Let's remove the normalization and then we do oh sorry the MSC 
multiplicative signal correction. Let's see what that does. We're gonna do like this. Looks reasonable. Actually, I would say the normalization here uh, looked nicer, uh, but it seems to be doing a reasonable job. There's a secret uh, little trick that uh, very few people uh, know, but sometimes doing MSC twice can actually lead to a better signal correction. I'm gonna try and do that. So I'm gonna add it one more time. I'm sort of disregarding the window right now. And you see here that indeed, when we do MSC twice, we actually get a much better um, correction. For some weird reason, uh, three times, four times, etc., is usually not so good. But two times is sometimes uh, useful. Let me try and do three times and see what happens. Nope. In this case, that doesn't really uh, make it nicer. But twice is, uh, is a good number, it seems. This goes for other types of preprocessing as well, that you may want to uh, do them iteratively or repeatedly. Uh, but that is definitely a, a possibility. Um, but let me see, let me try and remove this one again. Now you see here that you can also use the median. Basically, that's a way to ensure that, uh, let's say that your data had outline samples then correcting each spectrum towards the mean might be a bad idea but the median tends to be robust uh, towards uh, samples like that so it can be a good idea if you have um, let's say special phenomena in your data to try and use the median instead of the mean well as we talked about before uh, the msc is basically a correction with a slope and offset and the SMB is the same, except that the uh, offset and slope is calculated uh, differently. In the MSC, I'm comparing every sample to the average. In the SMB, oh, sorry, I didn't want to do both, even though that is also a possibility. In the SMB, I'm taking every spectrum, and from the spectrum, I subtract the average, and I divide with the standard deviation. And you see that it does a pretty good job at getting rid of the scattering as well. So in, in practical cases, when we're working, for example, with uh, NIR data, we often just try, uh, repeatedly try uh, s uh, several different types of uh, pre-processing and see which one uh, is making sense. And you may definitely also try and do combinations like uh, let me show you here for example we could do a an msc then we could do a let's see what do we have a derivative which we're going to talk about shortly i'm just going to do the default settings so that means a second order uh, sorry sorry a first order polynomial so, sorry, a first order derivative. And then I would like to, let's see, normalize. Here we are, with the uh, one norm, like this. And that actually looks spectacularly nice. Uh, you see that we more or less have only five samples here. Um, now, I didn't just randomly come up with these three in this particular order, but I've been playing around with many different combinations in order to find this. And that's a problem sometimes. Uh, all these methods are useful for, for example, getting rid of scatter, but there's very little theory to guide which methods are the optimal. Um, you may know when you work with specific types of data, but in general, you would often try different combinations. In other scenarios, like when you have other types of data, it's more easy to see which type of method uh, you would need. Um, but for scattering specifically, we often uh, just try different things. <laughs>